Hey, Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Today was not even supposed to be a review day. I've got a lot of other stuff going on, including a uh, Audible interlude live stream tonight. But this guy just arrived straight from WizKids, which was a whole thing unto itself I'm not going to get into. Uh, and it looks so awesome. I just had to bring it in here to the workshop and open it up. So here it is. Uh, War Duke. Unfortunately, I do not have an original War Duke figure, which seems completely insane because literally everybody owns that original LJN figure. And, and I might even have one stuck in a tote somewhere. Uh, but the reason this is such a big deal is everybody had the, that original figure when they were a kid. Everybody my age anyway. Well, and probably younger because... Apparently they made billions of War Dukes and the figure stuck around in Goodwills and whatever forever and ever and ever. You can still buy it for next to nothing uh, on eBay. But here is the new NECA release of War Duke, uh, the evil action figure. I love that. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. NECA is now doing Dungeons and Dragons figures. The companion figure to this one is Grim Sword, uh, which I did not have that one when I was a kid. Uh, definitely not as high profile as War Duke. But I just, I had to have this. Uh, the nostalgia was crazy, and you know NECA is just going to kill it with something like this. Uh, this is the War Duke Ultimate Action figure. Uh, on the back of the box, well, there's Grim Sword right there. The Evil Knight. Uh, War Duke fights as a remorseless, cold-hearted mercenary who works for coin. The evil swordsman serves Kalak as a cohort and adventuring companion from time to time. He wields a flame-tongued longsword and wears a dread helm. He never removes his helmet to reveal his face to others, but the visage beneath is that of a grim, hideously scarred gladiator. I, I just, I'm so stoked about this. Uh, and then bottom of the box, right there, all the credits for everybody involved in bringing this piece of art uh, into reality. Let's open it up, because I got it. Well, okay, first we got to open that front panel. Uh, you get a picture of the figure, get the figure itself, which looks unbelievable. The colors, everything. Let's get it out of there. I'm so stoked about this. Uh, I pre-ordered from WizKids website, because when this figure was first announced... They announced that pre-order, and it kind of gave me the impression that that might be the only way to get the figure. Like, just the wording of the announcement and, and the pre-order, I don't know. I, I basically got fooled into ordering from there. Could have gotten it from Big Bad. People are finding it in Target weeks ago, uh, which I have still not seen it in Target. I love this background. Uh, more great diorama work from the NECA team. Uh... So I had to wait for my whiz kids to ship, and I sent them several emails. I guess I am going to get into it. I sent them several emails like, hey, what's going on with this? Got no response whatsoever. And then finally, a few days ago, uh, they told me that the ship date was February 1st. And as I'm recording this, it's January 30th. So I actually got it a couple days before they had it scheduled to ship. So I can't feel too bad about that. And uh, I don't know a whole lot of people who have it yet, even though I've seen pictures of it uh, having been found online, uh, I don't think it's super common. So I'm still, I still feel kind of early enough to the game. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Because I, you know, I hate, uh, oh man, I left my, uh, I used my nippers for something else. I'm going to have to use regular old scissors on this guy. I feel so primitive. Uh, so, yeah, I, I like to get things as early as I can get them because, you know, obviously it's good to be able to get a review up as early as possible in the life cycle of a product. Like, I, I don't, you guys may have noticed, I, for whatever reason, I don't know how algorithms work, but we don't have the biggest following here. We don't have the highest view count here, which is fine. I love doing this, and I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, but if I can get a review up pretty early, you know, as early as possible, it definitely helps with uh, getting eyes on the review. So if I can get something early, 
uh, it's very nice. And I feel like this guy is, is here in a reasonable amount of time. Man, so many of these stupid things. My, my fingers literally hurt right now from pinching these stupid little plastic cords to try and pull them out and get them cut. I hate these things so much. We've got one more. Oh, and it's actually going through a plastic cover. And look, I appreciate NECA's dedication to keeping the product safe and intact. But my gosh, these things are just the worst. Ugh. Killing me. Killing me, NECA. Killing me here. What a miserable experience. And, and I know it's not a popular opinion, but I want these plastic trays gone on everything. If I never see another plastic tray again, I'll be perfectly fine with that. Tons of accessories on this guy. Tons of beautiful paint on this guy. Ah, oh, but I do like that he pops right out of there and that he's not in some weird pose that's going to like warp his limbs or whatever. Uh, and speaking of those limbs, be very careful. It's, it is super cold here in Georgia today. Gosh, look at that. Actual metal chain link. That's great. Uh, very cold here today in Georgia. So I'm going to be careful with all of these joints. If I get any resistance, uh, I'm going to stop. I'm going to cease and to desist. Uh, so we've got kind of a standard shoulder joint there. Got a bicep swivel. Feels pretty good. Uh, same thing at the elbow. You get a sw Oh, that moved really, really nicely. I, NECA has improved. They have definitely improved. So you've got a nice bicep or a elbow swivel there. Uh, single joint, fine by me. Wrist, you can see you've got a pivot there, a little swivel. Everything's moving really well on this guy. I'm pretty happy so far. Look at this great, this is a separate piece. So he's got kind of a standard human torso uh, underneath all of this business. But it's so it's fitted so perfectly and so well that it it almost looks like it's all just one sculpt. Got this great metallic blue chainmail arm. Little resistance in the shoulder there. I'm not going to mess with that too much. Uh, same articulation, bicep swivel, uh, elbow with a swivel at the top. Very pointy spikes, uh, but they are uh, they are rubbery. So you can still poke yourself pretty good, but they're not going to just jam into you. Oh, great. Look at that. Look at that elbow. Just bending no problem at all. Turning. Nice pivot. We are... Can't tell if we lost paint. No, there's no paint anywhere. So you can just see it's like a deep blue, not as metallic right there in the joint. But it's, it's really not noticeable to the eye at all. Uh, those arms, because of the torso... Uh, he is going to have permanent Maggie Simpson snowsuit arms. Like those are never going to hang just down at his sides. But that's okay because I am not standing him on the shelf in some weird neutral pose. Uh, look at the helm. Those red eyes look great. And this is an interesting thing because on the original figure, uh, you know, it was, it was uh, lower fidelity, so to speak. So it was very easy on the original figure just to have the black with the red eyes in it. But here, they couldn't really do that. They had to throw in some layers and, and some depth. And you can see there's like a black mask under the helmet. Uh, with and, and this is all just shadow. Looks fantastic. Uh, these, I am happy to say, are a more flexible plastic. So in the event that this guy does fall off your shelf, it is less likely that these are just going to snap off. I, I appreciate that. Uh, NECA's rigid plastic of the past, you know, pre often presented problems. And you know what? I got to say, at first I was a little disappointed that the necklace looked like it was part of this. 
but it keeps it in place. It's going to keep it looking good as opposed to swinging off to the side or whatever. I actually like that decision to make that part of the sculpt of his shoulder armor and, and all this stuff. Look at all these belts and everything, all the rings in them, all painted, all sculpted, all weathered in here. Just looks fantastic. Uh, he's got his belt with this loincloth piece, the sculpt and paint on it is phenomenal. Uh, hips. Oh, look at that. So this is, oh, this is a very soft, uh, I mean, which it should be, but again, you know, NECA, their history has been just sort of using materials that are maybe a little more rigid than they need to be sometimes. Uh, but in this instance, you can see you get a nice wide stance out of him. You can get, I mean, I'm not going to have him sitting in a chair or anything, but you get a pretty good bend in the legs there. Uh, hip articulation, you can see pretty standard. You've got the swivel at the top there that may need some loosening up. Usually that's one of the tighter joints on a NECA figure. But you've what you've got here is a socket with a peg that goes down into the thigh. Uh, so the thigh actually swivels on that, but it's a little... Oh, there we go. I just got it to turn a little bit. You can see it's a little bit straighter on now. Uh, same thing on the other side. The knees... You can see this one's kind of turned a little bit. I'm just going to... Oh, look at this. Oh, man. Everything is just moving so nicely on this guy. I'm very happy uh, with how nice everything feels. Nothing feels too stuck except for that shoulder. But uh, it's a very different experience from, from moving a NECA figure from, you know, even five years ago. Uh, all right, so... You gotta turn that boot around, get it straight. So are the boot top. Oh, okay, he's got the two gems there. So I actually straighten that up a little. I know you guys don't need to see all this, like I'm gonna get him posed perfectly, but I do like to mess with these joints and try and get everything aligned in, in kind of a neutral, forward looking, because things like that knee joint being a little bit off. I mean, it just makes the figure look different. Uh, all right, ankle joints, standard modern ankle joints uh, with the peg coming off of the hinge. Get a little stray red paint right there that should come off relatively easily. These are solid, man. These are nice, thick joints. Again, uh, NECA of, uh, of post-2020, I would say, is a very different product uh than previous eras look at this cool armor piece now these are stiff these will stab you so be careful with those but look how cool this is this armor piece with the straps right here uh, i love how the design of this guy one of the coolest things about him uh is just you can see all the differences in in textures and layers and and where everything is such a, a dungeons and dragony thing on the back he's got the massive scabbard for his long sword uh he's got two different uh i want to that really almost short swords we'll get to those in a minute uh, i already took a look and look at that awesome armored hand this is fantastic you guys uh so we already took a look at this actual metal chain link With that sheath or scabbard, depending on if you consider this a knife or a sword. And you can see you've got a little bit of paint loss on there. You've got a divot right here, but I'm not... Like, yeah, it shouldn't be there, but at the same time, I don't know, with the way this thing hangs down, like I can almost buy it as an in-universe, this is how this would look. Uh, whatever your mileage may vary on that your your justification uh, may vary on that the little detail on this jewel and the little chain hanging off of it there phenomenal so this torso articulation you can see at the lower portion of his torso 
You've got a very, very large ball joint situation. I don't think you're going to get a ton. I would not recommend putting any pressure whatsoever on this scabbard. Uh, do not hold here or here because this is probably just glued onto this strap. And I would imagine it could pop off uh, if you're not, you know, somewhat careful with it. Uh, so you can see that the more you play with a joint like this, the looser it gets and the more movement you have. So pretty decent. Uh, and I appreciate this rather than just a cut joint at the waist, uh, which in this day and age, I just don't find that acceptable anymore. Uh, so there is our figure. Oh, here, here's an important uh, thing that I sometimes forget. So he is... A very big boy at eight and a quarter inches tall. And if you want a little comparison, uh, I've got double zero snake eyes, which I look at as kind of a standard one twelfth scale figure. Uh, I also have, what else have I got sitting around here? Uh, there is Black Adam. As you can see he is much larger than Black Adam, which... I think McFarlane's should be about the same scale as NECA's, right? Uh, and then what else? One more, since it's a, a NECA product and is a relatively human size. I mean, RoboCop is taller than a standard human, but give you kind of an idea, uh, there is RoboCop. So War Duke is a big, big fellow. Very cool. All right, let's take a look at these accessories. His long sword is indeed long. Got fantastic detail on that. The jewel is nice and clean and shiny. Uh, you've got the dragon claw clutching, uh, clutching the orb. The bottom of the hilt, the hilt has the wrappings on it. Uh, I actually had a necklace that looked like that when I was a teenager. And you can see the wear uh, painted on the blade, which is nice and thin, looks good. Uh, just kind of a wash, not really wear, but just a wash to bring out the detail of the sword. And then to go with that sword, you've got the flame effect, which, by the way, are very dungeon and dragony looking flames. Uh, and I don't know quite how to explain that other than to say just all of this detail, these are very artistic flames. Uh, they, they look... I don't know that to me, to my eye, these are distinctly dungeon and dragony. And that is going to just slip. Ooh, it's a little snug. Oh man, <laughs> this is fighting me a little bit. Might have to heat this up. Uh, before getting it all the way on there. And I'll tell you, once I get it on, I might not take it off ever. Be extremely careful with this because if you just like a big ogre grab this and try and jam it down on this blade, it is probably going to break the blade off of your sword. Uh, so when you're putting this on, you know, take your time, take it easy. Uh, if you feel like you need to heat the flames up first, by all means, do that. It'll probably make it easier. But just grip this thing, grip the sword, grip the, you know, precise, careful motions. That might be it. Oh, look at that. Okay. Oh, no, it's not. Look, it goes all the way up to the top. This is terrifying. Oh man, there it is. I think so that is going to sit just like that. It almost seems like it should go cuz look, this is curved here. It seems like it should go all the way down. Uh but for the purposes of this review right now Oh, there it is. It does. It goes all the way down. You can see it fits perfectly around that blade. 
I probably should have done a little time lapse there, but you know. Oh, and you can even see that if it's swing like this side looks like sort of the back, like this side towards enemies, because the suggestion of motion is in these back flames here. That's incredible. So that, I mean, that's going in his hand. There's no, ooh, that hand. That is going to need to be heated up. Unless they've done the deal. No, okay. There are older, some older toy lines uh, would have parts that pop off, so you could just slide it in and pop that back on. I can't remember. Maybe McFarland did that with some things. All right, I'm just going to very carefully open that up. Try and slide that hilt. There we go. Look at that. All right. Fantastic. Fits in nice and snug. All right, set him. Well, we'll set him over here. Uh, we've got his two uh, daggers slash short swords. Look at that little blade, that vicious little piece at the end there that's great nice touch great looking curved blade also has the wash that the long sword has and this one goes in there i believe oh maybe not does it look like it fits in there? I guess so. No. Hmm. That doesn't seem right either. Oh, I'm a little concerned. Oh, uh, this. Let me get that arm out of the way. I might need a little visual aid oh man that just doesn't feel like it's wide enough to go in there uh, let's take a look at the other dagger short sword situation again beautifully detailed nice and long and sharp looks great the hilt it's wonderful yeah this one I mean definitely goes in here because it looks like it matches that but maybe not, though. But it doesn't go in this one. No, because it's too wide. So this goes in here. And I mean, that does look right. That looks like that matches. So the other one goes here. Interesting. Oh, you know what I just noticed that I didn't see before? Look at that glove underneath... The armored hand with all the buckles for the armor and everything. Beautiful touch. I did, and the reason I noticed that is because... Let me put this back down. I'm going to mess around with that other uh, dagger in a minute. Uh, we have got a pointing hand. Just kind of a nice touch. We've got a more open sea grip type situation with the armored hand. Uh, and then you've got a smaller C grip for the dagger for uh, the right hand. Then his shield, which just look at, it looks like hammered steel. Like you can just see the, the creation of this, I guess, in the sculpt. And then on the other side, beautiful. So wait, though, that means the sword has to go in his... So is he a lefty? Because it seems like the sword... Because this is for right hand. So the sword needs to go... Because that's... I mean, that's not going to be upside down. It would be great if you could switch these. That's not the case. Look at the nice paint on that strap. Really well done. Yeah, it'd be really nice if you could swap these two pieces out. And you can't. 
uh, see the shield could go on whichever arm you wanted. Although if they swapped out, then, then they probably wouldn't be in there and be sturdy enough, uh, to stay on. Let's, I don't often do this, but let's refer to our box art here. Okay. Yeah, that shield's going to have to go, which makes sense because wouldn't you want your armored arm holding a flaming sword? Wouldn't that make more sense? Okay. Oh, interesting. So I kind of thought it looked like this should be silver. And sure enough, in this art, which this shows where the daggers go, uh, it is silver. So that is meant to be a blade, and they just missed a paint app on it. Which, uh, whatever, not a huge deal. I'm not super worried about that. Uh, but that also shows that this does indeed go this way into this scabbard. Oh, and there we go. You just have to get it in from the right angle. There, There is a correct angle to put it in there. Uh, so there he is. I, this has gone on much longer than I expected, but this figure is incredible with tons of detail to cover. That is War Duke uh, from Advanced Dungeons and Dragons from NECA. Uh, I look forward to more figures in this line. I'll probably grab Grimsword. I didn't pre-order Grimsword because I didn't have the same attachment to him. Uh, but if I see him in Target, I'll probably grab him because this is an incredible figure. I love this sword and sorcery stuff. The more of it we get, the better. Uh, thanks for watching, you guys. Please like, subscribe, share. Tell your friends about needless things. And uh, always remember, worship at the altar of evil. Smash that like button if you like needless things.